Gary Pass was joined here by John Jackson and JJ. Uh, a crazy day yesterday at USC. The situation with Steve Sarkeesian. Let's hit on that right at the top. Uh, Sarkeesian as a person, Sarkeesian as a coach. Where do you see this situation going for here in the immediate time frame? You know, well, first of all, it's just an unfortunate situation for Sark. I think that anybody that's close to the organization, you know, really – you know, likes and respects Sark. So, you know, with all that being said, I think the most important thing is to let's deal with Sark as the person first. Forget about the football. Forget about the loss last week. Let's try to get him right as a person first. Um, you know, if there is an illness there, which that's what it seems like that, that, that everything points that way, you have to sort of take care of the person. And Trojan fans, I mean, that's who we are, right? We always, you know, stick together. We always represent, um, you know, you know, our own and people that are in our organization and we stick together. So I hope the Trojan fans do that going forward. And let's talk, obviously, the football part of things. Clay Helton steps in as the interim head coach. <laughs> oh, hello, Notre Dame, coming up in six days. Uh, if you're Clay Helton, you're trying to move this thing forward with that focus, how do you handle that? Well, Clay really has the toughest job because you're exactly right. It's going to be Notre Dame. It's going to be you know Utah. It's going to be Cal. I mean, it's right in a row. He couldn't have picked a tougher stretch of the schedule to get involved with this. And But I do think that because he has the past experience of doing this, the fact that he has can go back to the Fresno State win and how that he got the team ready for that. You know, the players are going to buy in and give, you know, give him the benefit of the doubt that, and trust him that he'll be able to do that. So, you know, Clay Hilton is, is, is very widely respected across the, the entire team. Um, he's been in this place before, and I think that the veteran guys that have been around this situation just a couple years ago, those guys are the ones that will step up in support of him. I think he'll do just fine. Uh, Clay Hilton did get a standing ovation from the team in his first meeting room. And let's talk about that, someone who is around the players a lot. Um, who do you maybe see some of the guys are going to be taking charge? How do you see this team? moving forward from the player standpoint well I think from you know from a player's uh, situation you have to look at the veteran guys I mean the, the seniors the guys that are leading this team you know whether it be the Cody Kesslers even you know Max Turk who got hurt you know you know guys that have been around and, and went through it before those are the guys who have to step to the forefront now now is no time to step into the background and to be honest with you they have to play that way that's sort of the thing that you know sort of sets this apart is that if the players practice that way if they play that way trust me at the end of the day this is Notre Dame. <laughs> uh, let's go a little bit bigger picture on it, JJ. In the last few years, there's been a lot of upheaval in, in the USC football program and a chance in the next couple of months. How do you get this ship righted? How do you get this thing going in the right direction? What's the most important thing that you see? Well, this is a big decision for the athletic department. I don't know if I have the right answer in terms of which way to go about it. I just know that this is such a critical point in USC history that they have to get it right for several reasons. You know, the first reason is that you're coming off of the sanctions and all the things that went wrong. Things were going from a momentum standpoint in the right direction recruiting wise everything was going great so you have to sort of make sure that you follow that up you cannot afford to lose a recruiting class because that's really critical so I think it's all about the athletic department the timing of you know what you're going to do from to handle Sark situation if you're going to get a new coach what that timing is all of that has to be at the right timing you know in, in, in the right person and handled correctly because this is a critical decision in USC football history. Let's end this video talking about some uh, pleasant memories. This is the 10-year anniversary of the 4th and 9 of Bush Push. When you're going back and you're thinking memories of that game in your mind, what stands out? Well, I just can remember standing on the sideline and watching the ball when, when Matt Liner threw that ball to Dwayne Jarrett on the 4th and 10, and it just sailed right over the defensive back shoulder. I couldn't believe that the ball got in there, and that's when I finally said, hey, you know what, we might have a chance to win this thing. And so when Dwayne got down there and then Matt got pushed out of bounds and, and then Notre Dame thought the, the game was over with, they came storming on the field and then the referees took him off the field and the fans just sat there while, while the bush push happened. Man, that was great. That was uh, The funny thing was is after that happened, Gary, everybody was celebrating running on the field. I took off running on the field and I said, where am I going? <laughs> after I got to about the 50-yard line, I said, where am I going? So I, it, was just, it was just a great moment um, you know, in USC history and I'm sure that uh, it'll be talked about you know, this being the 10-year anniversary and for years to come. I loved watching Notre <laughs> Dame fans having to go off the field back up into the stands. Oh, that was awesome. That was great. For John Jackson, this is Gary Pasquitz. You're watching We Are SC.